honestly, I wish Disney didn't decide to pair these two together. Because, in my opinion, it doesn't make sense. One is, or is better than the other, by a pretty big margin, so putting them together only makes it more obvious. But, history is history, and Disney has released these two together as one movie. Even though they are two separate shorts that have nothing to do with each other, outside of connecting narration from two different people. Yeah, Disney, why did you put these two together? Why? What was your point of putting these two together? More bang for your buck? Well, thankfully, in, in recent years, you've actually made it easier to get these two shorts separately. Thankfully, because honestly, as much as I want to collect a majority of the Masterpiece Collection VHS saves, this is what I, don't, I do not want. This is one I don't want. Because one of them is painfully mediocre, and then the other one is amazing but has to be dragged down by said thing that is said painful mediocre. Ugh. It's just a weird situation all around, dude. But I will do my best to review it as fairly as I can. So, let's talk about it. What's up? What's happening? What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the station. What is your fan name? Anisha, including TV and movies. This is one of your hosts, Small. Welcome back to you, Disney Vember 2. Welcome to my review of probably one of the most confusing entries in Disney's catalog, which is The Adventures of Ichabod and Mr. Toad. Two short films smushed together. I don't know why Disney thought this was a good idea, but apparently they thought it was a good idea to put these two different shorts together. So, since these are two different shorts, I have to review them separately. But I know what you're thinking. You're like, hey, you're not going to do any of the other uh, short compilation movies. Why'd you pick this one? Well, for one, it was only two shorts rather than like five or six stuffed together. So I was able to give it a bit of leeway. And number two, because one of them is just so awesome and amazing that I couldn't skip over it. I think you know which one I'm talking about. But for those that don't, well... I hope this review can still be entertaining in some way. So, let's start with Mr. Toad first, because that one... I have thoughts about it, to say the least. Here's my review. This was a first-time watch. I hope you enjoy. Let's start with Mr. Toad first, since it's the one that begins the film, and it's kind of forgettable, unfortunately. The narration from Basil Rathsbone, yes, that's Basil Rathsbone from Son of Frankenstein, is great. His narration is by far the best part of this short. The animation is very bouncy and full of personality. The story is solid. Like, it's a story we've seen before, but it's solid. The imagery is striking at times, especially when uh, Toad gets that weird car disease thing. You know, the thing that gives him those freaky looking eyes. The plot twist is surprisingly good. I will admit I did not see the plot twist coming and I actually thought it was pretty masterful of Disney. And it has pretty good voice acting. As well as a satisfying conclusion. Like, I like the ending. It's goofy, but it's a fun little ending that pretty much takes things back to the status quo. And the voice acting is very good here. Like, I enjoy the voice acting. I enjoy all the characters. I enjoy all their different voices and personalities. That's fine. Unfortunately, though, everything else surrounding this short is a huge problem. Let's talk about it in depth as best I can without spoiling anything. However, the characters are kind of hit or miss stereotypes. The comedy, including the slapstick, does not very land very well. The courtroom scene absolutely drags. The pacing is slow. There's a lot of recycled, reused animation. Toad's character development is way too rushed. And despite being only 30 minutes long, it feels like it takes an hour. Yeah, all those are pretty big problems, but I'd say its biggest problem is rushing Toad's character development. Like, if they were given a little bit more time, or maybe use their time a little bit more wisely, rather than using it mostly on chase sequences and recycled animation, we could have probably gotten a better character arc for Toad, but because it's so rushed and they have so little time, they don't do that. And it just feels 
like it wasn't given enough time to actually fully develop and it just feels like hey I'm this way and now by the end I'm gonna be this way with pretty much no transition whatsoever outside of one prison scene that's it lame to say the least it has its fans, but I'm just not one of them. It's harmless, and it has some of that vintage Disney charm. But overall, a one-and-done at best. I was not impressed with this short, and honestly, it makes me sad that this is what the other one had to be paired with. Because this short is painfully mediocre. And honestly, I'd watch Bambi over that. And I had my problems with Bambi, too. So... 5 out of 10, I guess. Not a fan of this short at all. It's painfully average. Absolutely boring. But, The Legend of Sleepy Hollow, however... Oh, is probably one of my new all-time favorite pieces of Disney animation ever. Yeah, now we get to the part of the review where I praise the ever-living crap out of it because The Legend of Sleepy Hollow... It's such a well-done retelling of the source material. It's so freaking good here. The narration and singing from the legendary Bing Crosby, yes, that Bing Crosby, the guy that you mostly know for Christmas music, is absolutely phenomenal. The characters are instantly iconic. Ichabod, uh, Catherine, sorry, I, first time watch, I'm trying to remember all their names. But they're all really, really good here. Absolutely love them. The, the story is well-structured and does a great job adapting its Washington Irving source material. The comedy and slapstick is top-notch and reminded me a lot of classic Popeye cartoons. Like, you have a love triangle in here between Ichabod, Catherine, and... Uh, what was his name? What was... Sorry, like I said, first time watch, I haven't remembered everything yet. But I gotta look. Brom, that's his name. The love triangle between Brom, Ichabod, and Catherine reminds me a lot of Bluto, Popeye, and Olive Oil, and the way that all those characters w uh, work off of each other. Which, honestly, it's good company to have for Ichabod, and it is definitely high praise on my end, because I am a huge fan of those classic Popeye cartoons. Some of my favorite cartoons as a kid. The animation is outstanding, especially in the final act. When everything gets spooky, Disney fully leans into it. Like, obviously they can't show blood or actual decapitation, but they get away with a lot in that final act when you finally get to see the Headless Horseman do his thing. And it is amazing. If you're someone that loves twisted, dark stuff, you are going to adore this final part of the segment. Just so freaking good. The build-up to the Headless Horseman is perfect. Like, it starts out a lot like Mr. Toad did. It's lighthearted, it's goofy, it's silly. But then you realize Ichabod only wants Catherine pretty much just to be rich, which is pretty much the only reason why he wants her. Which makes you realize that he's not supposed to be a sympathetic character. And then when it actually gets to the Headless Horseman, it feels like it was built up great. All bridged together by Brahms singing about the Headless Horseman, at the Halloween party, and of course the singing is Bing Crosby, and he sings amazingly. Like his singing in this in this short is so so good. Uh, the songs are all unforgettable. This technically counts as a musical because there's at least four or five different songs in this one half hour short. But honestly, the songs are well short, so I don't really count it as a musical. But all the songs are very good here. I mean, it is Bing Crosby. Dude's a legend. Enough said there. Especially the Headless Horseman song, which is so cool to hear from Crosby after listening for years to just him doing Christmas music. Like, that's what Bing Crosby is most well known for. He's most well known for his Christmas music. But when he gets to do dark, spooky stuff like this, oh man, it sounds so good with his deep voice. Like, I can't do it justice. You gotta go listen to the song for yourself on YouTube. It is so good. Like, definitely going on the Halloween playlist kind of good. 
The ending is shocking in the best of ways. I won't say why because it is a spoiler, but I'll just say if you know Sleepy Hollow and you know how this book ends, the movie ends the same way. The runtime's perfect. It perfectly utilizes its half hour runtime and it doesn't feel like it's taking an hour, which makes it automatically better than Toad. The pacing is fast, but doesn't rush anything, and rewatchability is very, very high. In conclusion, whether you're a horror fanatic like me or just someone who loves dark, twisted cartoons, like Nostalgia Critic, this is a must-watch for sure. 11 out of 10. I freaking love this short, and it is easily the best part of this movie. Overall, it's a shame that these two got paired together because one is vastly superior to the other. Mr. Toad isn't bad, but it really is Ichabod and the Legend of Sleepy Hollow who absolutely steals the show here. Sleepy Hollow is so good that I'm willing to forgive most of Toad's mediocrity, and I can still highly recommend it. It's a Disney classic. What more is there to be said? So, short one, 5 out of 10, painfully mediocre, not a fan of it, outside of Basil, Rathbone, uh, Basil Rathbone's incredible narration. But Ichabod and the Legend of Sleepy Hollow, amazing. One of the best pieces of Disney animation I've seen in a while. So that kind of leaves me conflicted with my final verdict overall because it's like, well, these are two separate shorts that should not have been paired together, but got paired together because they're both based off of books. I guess. That's the only connection I can think of. And that sucks, because I feel like if this was just Sleepy Hollow, it would be an 11 out of 10, and it would be in, like, my top 10 favorite Disney movies slash Disney animations of all time. But because it got paired with Toad, unfortunately, that ends up hurting its overall score pretty drastically. But because Sleepy Hollow is so good, I'm willing to mostly forgive Toad's painful mediocrity. I, w I will sit through that if it means I get to sit through Sleepy Hollow again. Because Sleepy Hollow is so damn good. Like, you have to watch it. Even if it's not October anymore, you have to watch it by any means necessary. And what's even cooler is that, thankfully, these two are actually available separately on VHS. There's a Legend of Sleepy Hollow VHS tape, and there's a Mr. Toad VHS tape. And then, of course, there is some VHS tapes that put the two together into one movie. But, in my opinion... Get Sleepy Hollow and just pretend Toad doesn't exist. Because this is way better than this. But overall, because I love Sleepy Hollow so much and I can't see myself giving it anything lower than a great score, Final Verks an 8 out of 10 for the movie overall. Yes, Toad is mediocre and drags down a huge chunk of this overall film. But once you get to Sleepy Hollow, it all becomes worth it. From the dialogue to the characters, to the writing, to the, the Headless Horseman, to the music, to the slapstick, to the comedy, to the story. Like, everything, in my opinion, about Ichabod and the Legend of Sleepy Hollow and Disney's adaptation of it is perfect. And it sucks that it got paired with something that was so flawed and painfully average. But overall, it's still a great movie. Because neither of these are bad. I just wish that these two were available separately on things besides VHS. So, yeah. Bit of a weird conflicting review for a weird conflicting movie. So, thank you guys so much for watching. Please don't forget to like, share, subscribe for more videos like this almost every single day. Definitely check out Legend of Sleepy Hollow. I know it's not October anymore, but it's still worth a watch if you haven't seen it. And stay tuned because next time... We're going back to actual Disney films. And the next one is, uh... The next one's quite famous, to say the least. This is one of Disney's most well-known movies. It's a movie that has been done by a thousand other companies since, but none have been able to top this version. Heck, Disney can't even top it themselves. So, I'll see you guys next time when we talk all about the very well-known... Disney animation. I can't really say it's a masterpiece. I have my problems with it, and I'll talk about it in that review. But for the beloved piece of Disney animation known as Cinderella. I remember this one being pretty good, but I actually haven't watched it in a while, so 
if you don't mind, I'm going to go watch it now and see if it holds up as much as I thought it does. So, I'll see you in the next review. Like the fool who is